welcome to Talk Right Podcast. Uh, tonight's episode, we got uh, a thriller writer and his narrator, uh, Scott Cook and Dave Alexander. Uh, Nick, why don't you take over and introduce our guest for us? Sure. Uh, well, we have Scott Cook or Scott W. Cook, uh, and he is the author of the Scott Jarvis Investigation Series, the USS Bull Shark Naval Thriller Series, the Catherine Cook Sea Adventure Series, as well as some horror books that we might mention here in a bit. And we also have Dave Alexander, who narrates the Scott Jarvis Investigation Series and the USS Bull Shark Naval Thriller Series. And I'm guessing you have to look up a lot of Japanese words. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> That's All one right. of the things that we always get into is <laughs> what we as authors do to try to make our narrators stumble when actually we should be helping them. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. But it's fun. Yeah, oh yeah. Learn oh, yeah. a lot of Japanese. <laughs> So you there have a, a military <laughs> background, don't you, Scott? What's that? Yeah, you're a prior military, aren't you? Uh, no, actually, no. People think oh. that. No, no. They wouldn't I let really me thought in. You, uh, like, all well, this time, I, I thought you were, I mean, just because of the, uh, the books you write. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. Well, I do. My were you a life. history buff all of your life? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, maybe not when I was a toddler, but pretty soon after that, I became a history buff. Uh, I like World War II, Roman history, uh, Napoleonic era, a few other, few other genres too. Well, if you would, why don't you describe uh, uh, the Scott Jarvis series and how different it is from the Bull Shark series and how different <laughs> it is from the Catherine Cook series. You write very different things. Well, yeah. Um, the Jarvis series started... I, I wrote the first one like 25 years ago. Um, and then it, it sort of sat on the shelf and it kind of collected dust until about 2017 when a friend of mine suggested to me that I should start publishing on Kindle um, and I on Amazon. And I didn't know anything about it. So I went and did some research and started off, you know, I obviously I brushed the book off and edited it several times. And, you know, um, and it's funny because Every, everyone I put out, the people that I know, beta readers and friends and stuff, it's like, oh, this is the best one you've ever done, you know, and I, which is nice, but it's also like, what does that mean? You know, the number 12 is better than number one, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a Florida-based detective series. Uh, and the main character, the reason he shares my first name is because when I wrote him, I couldn't think of a first name at first. So I said, well, I'll just plug this in and change it later. And it just sort of stuck, you know. Um, I had the so, same trouble early on, and I went on Facebook and I asked my friends, uh, "Hey, would any of y'all like to be in my book?" And a whole bunch of people volunteered, so I just made two columns for male, male and female. And whenever <laughs> I came to a new character, I gave them that name. And a lot of them didn't like it, but uh, I eventually killed most of them off anyway. <laughs> yeah, I remember you saying that in a previous podcast, and I think in. No collar to blue collar, you mentioned that as well. I guess not, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's there's a much easier way that I found probably after, after about four books. There's actually a website called uh, fakenames.com. I think I've it, seen that. You, you, t you put in the parameters that you want, you know, the age range, male, female, uh, ethnic background, things like that. It spits out not just a name, but what kind of car they drive, the, where <laughs> they live. Wow, All this fake information, and you can just boom create your bio and be done. Yeah, that's pretty cool because you know the thing that I find is you want names, character names, to sound real. You know what I mean? Like you, you don't want to get into these stodgy sort of fake sounding names, and it, it's hard to quantify that. But um, you can only use so many Smith and Joneses before you run out. You know. Yeah, and as an audiobook narrator, I should also point out that you you want to avoid five people that all start with the letter S in the same scene together. <laughs> that, that was a dig scott <laughs> oh i see I, did just, i do that it just happened to come about that in in one scene in one of my books several of my main characters old flames came together and they oh, were right. sarah uh, see, savannah was it, Jordy? Oh. sarah 
Savannah. Yeah. Savannah. Yep. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah Savannah. Savannah. Uh, Sandy. And there was four of them. I can't remember the last one. But yeah, it just, I mean, that's the way it happened. <laughs> Well, that's, that's how it goes sometimes, you know. What can you do? It's uh, That's the power of the writer. We can do what we want. Um, we are masters of our own fake universe. Now, out of curiosity, Scott Jarvis, because when when there are Florida mysteries, a lot of times the lead character, if he's a detective or an ex-cop or a current cop, that they're not from Florida. Is is the Scott Jarvis in, in your books from Florida or from somewhere else? No, he's from Rhode Island, too. Um, ah. He moved down after graduating high school. Uh, he was, he's an ex-cop. Uh, and he graduated and moved down to Orlando and went to college there and uh, became a detective there. And so it kind of starts off there. So the, the books sometimes will go back and forth and they cover it. Like the, the latest, well, they, they go all over the state and different areas. It's like your guys' do. Um, so it keeps it interesting, keeps from getting too stale from being in the same town the whole time. You know, like, like you asked before, what what is it like? He, he's kind of across a bit of a, a bit of Spencer, a bit of Philip Marlowe, some Doc Ford thrown in. Um, that's that's we a pretty all good draw from those same characters. I, it's all our characters are you know a, a conglomerate of all everything that we've read. Oh yeah, you can't help that, and and it influences as as you say a lot, Wayne. You're strongly influenced by Travis McGee, Doc Ford, you know, and and. Uh, I have been too, so it's natural. Well, before we what's, switch over to Dave, and what's the hardest thing that uh, Scott's thrown at you? Me? Did you say the oh, most? Yeah. What's the hardest thing he's thrown at? You? <laughs> oh my heavens! Besides bricks, no. Um, there was a scene in one of his in Scott Jarvis where it was. Um, I'm just getting my feet wet when it comes to narrating. Um, and he threw in something where there was. Was it Israeli? Um, it was Hispanic. It was Scott. Uh, there was a Scottish guy, and I was just like, "Oh my heavens!" And it, I mean, and it was it was several pages long, and I'm like, and I'd stop and I'd kind of look over to my right, like, "Scott, you're killing me!" <laughs> I'm sure I've been cursed many times. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably the uh, the toughest thing that's been thrown thrown at me from Scotty. Well, well you know what I do. The next one Nick's going to get will have uh, Jesse taking a wedding party over to St. Bart's, and there will be 20 characters. Oh, all feel free, all, Nick. You know, <laughs> is this the same book where you asked me how my Taino accent is? <laughs> oh, God. I try to keep them separated into small groups, you know, two or three over here talking and then two or three over here talking. So it won't be real hard, but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> oh, boy. And they all have to come. I mean. Sure. Florence is getting married, so they all got to yeah, be but, there. Well, what I sometimes do, see, in the Jarvis series, in that world, he's the one writing the books. So he's sort of his own Watson. So it, it lets me break the fourth wall on occasion, and I'll even have him talk to Dave and literally at in the in the in a dialogue will say to someone or they'll say, are you going to, you're going to make Dave Alexander read this when you do this audio book. And so I'll actually, <laughs> so it's, yeah. I don't know. Dude, that's just a little bit of fun that. Yeah. You know, yeah. You sort of, that it totally uh, that broke is, me off too. You know, cause I'm, I'm just reading along like, wait a minute. Did, did you just throw me in there? Yeah. Funny. It is hysterical. Oh, that's great. Yeah. There's some, there's some adult content too, you know, here and there. Yeah. And I always think about, you know, Dave sitting in his studio reading that and praying that, that his wife and kids don't come in. <laughs> yeah, and typically the um, the female characters, her name, the girlfriend's name is Lisa. My wife's name happens to be Lisa. So it's like, oh, this is interesting. I wonder if Lisa's listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the Bull Shark series? I imagine that's especially from what you've just said about the Scott Jarvis. I imagine that's quite different. Oh yeah, I think it is, especially. But but I love I love the Bull Shark. Anvil Art Turner is is got to be one of my favorite characters. Wait, what's the name? Anvil Art. Anvil Art. Yeah, I love him. That's his nickname. Yeah. He's the he's the commander of the submarine. So it's that that's one of the cool things about. Well, I'll tell you, 
there's several cool things about writing World War II. Um, one of them is that everybody smokes, man. I mean, these cats smoked <laughs> everywhere, right? Like anytime, any place, weddings, funerals, at church. They're, Rainstorms. They're like, oh, Jack. The, the submarine's on the bottom and they're running out of air and there's 80 cats lighting up lucky strikes. You know, like, let's just suck away all of them. But it's great because it gives it brighter. <laughs> It gives you well, something. I was in the Marine Corps. We got we got three cigarettes with every sea ration box. Yeah, that's. I mean, but you know, and I think probably um, Wayne and Nick, because you guys are both writers. Um, cigarettes or cigars or things like that. It's a it's a great emotional conveyance tool uh, because you can do so much with that. So that's a lot of fun to you know to to, to use in a scene or as a character is expressing something. How he lights his smoke, how he smokes it, how he flicks his ash, that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, how he forgets a pack every time. Right. He takes a drag and thinks about what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yes, I do throw Dave a lot of you know. There's German accents and there's Japanese characters and you know, Melanesians and you know. Yeah. And of course, you know, five thousand characters because there's there's. You know, there's 20,000 Marines on, on shore, and Dave's got to read them all. Yeah. <laughs> they are a lot of fun, man. I, I, those those uh, bull shark novels are a blast. Um, they're, 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 you know, there's not a dull moment in them, that's for sure. Uh -huh. And real quick, because we, we, we don't have the uh, narrator for this next series because he's British and didn't want to stay up late with us. <laughs> That's right. I think he was just Sleep. embarrassed because we just celebrated, you know, <laughs> our independence yeah, independent country. You know, he's like, I'm still mad at the colonists. Isn't That's it? it. That's right. Uh, you, but, those. <laughs> you have the Catherine Cook Sea Adventure series, which seems to be, you know, Horatio Hornblower esque, but with a with a gal. Uh, yes. Is she a pirate? Like, what? What's what? Tell us a little no, about. So it um yeah it's sort of a blending of cs forrester and patrick o'brien and dewey lambden and um so her story is she's james cook's illegitimate granddaughter and she was uh his son james who uh, served in the royal navy as well you know had a fling with an american girl and and then the, the woman died so james came back to get his daughter and that trip across back across the Atlantic just got her, she fell in love with the sea and she learned everything about, you know, she learned about sailing and about ships and she spent her whole life growing up that way with the desire to become a captain, of course, in an age where women didn't generally do that. Forrester and Patrick O'Brien. But uh, through, through a series of bizarre events, she ends up uh, taking, you know, she, she's, she's on a, a merchantman that gets captured by French privateers and she ends up taking it back. And so she gets, she, she lands herself a command because of that. And Scott, I'll tell you, I love how she was, how you first introduced her as a part of a story along with one of the Scott Jarvis books. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, that, that's how Bull Shark came about too. Yeah. Uh, and it was a historical background. So when I did that book, both Dave and Philip had to narrate and, and work together on that. Uh, and then I pulled the Catherine Cook chapters out and just published them as a as a, a separate book, and then wrote a sequel. That's very cool. I, Stephen King is famous for sort of cross pollinating across his books and and putting little mm -hmm. snippets in. And I'm I'm sure some of those books started from a snippet of something that he thought that's really good, deserves its own book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's even, in some of his stories, he's even referenced himself. Uh, oh, yeah. For, like, yeah. He's a character in the Dark Tower. Yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. I mean, that's, someone asked me the other day, I said, have you ever put yourself in one of your books? I said, no. Um, but it would be kind of interesting to do that in a Jarvis book, just to have, you know, there's someplace and there's a guy who's kind of given the eyeball for some reason. They don't know, and it's me. But you, you, it never says it's me, but it'll be me, you know. <laughs> well, you can, you I, can that may be that. happening in my next book Scott, uh, Scott Cook is you know it's not a really rare name Scott is pretty common Cook is very common that's why the W because uh, I can't it, do that <laughs> well yeah but guess what the W stands for so in, in my opinion some of the best writers have a Wayne in their name someplace <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what the W stands for so we got but a I have of been in several novels I've been in uh, one of Don McKenna's uh, 
two or three of uh, Cap Daniels. Um, there was another one. I can't remember. Well, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's so strange to me like to be talking to you guys because I've been reading your stuff for a long time. Uh, Wayne's obviously because he's got so many books. And how I kind of came about it was um, a buddy of mine, I have two friends. One told me about Doc Ford. Uh, and then another one told me about Ed Robinson's Trawler Trash series. So as I was reading the Trawler Trash, I think it was the first or second book, uh, Mead Breeze is reading one of Rodney Riesel's Dan Coast books. Yeah. Uh, and I think he also mentioned Don Middlebrook too. And I, so I found, and I think, I guess it, I, he mentioned Jesse McDermott, I, I, I would imagine. I, I think so. So I found some of these books through that, you know, through the, through the fiction of the story. And I found, and of course, obviously Nick's, you know, I found through Wayne's, of course. Uh, what happened with uh, Ed, he and I had talked about doing something together for a while, and I visited Ed on his boat many times, and he and his wife, Kim, really nice people, and uh, we were talking about it, and he finally he said, oh, I got a great idea. I'll tell you about it after I'm done, and I had to wait, I had to wait until I read it. I'm reading the book, and here's Mead Breeze pacing the deck. He's waiting for something to happen, waiting for a phone call or something. And he picks up a paperback to find out what Jesse McDermott's up to. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, this guy just made my fictional character a fictional character in his fiction. That's <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, so I like, turned around and made Ed and his wife Kim fictional characters in my book. Yeah, with my yeah. fictional character serving them beers. Yeah, yeah. They, they came well, to the rest of the got that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, that, it's 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 cool to do that to sort of mix these universes you know and and um i've kind of done that a few times where in in the jarvis stories he'll be talking to so for example there's a there's a Mossad agent at one point that he has to deal with and um he says something about oh you know i don't know he says oh well she says well you must have read too many one too many randy wayne white novels and he makes a comment like yeah too bad doc four isn't real and she looks at him and says isn't he and then just kind of goes on from there just you know just to, just to, like a little tweak, a little who knows what kind of thing. I love, I love using current events and characters from outside my world. And uh, me and Steve Becker share characters all the time. That they just live two miles apart, so they obviously would know each other. Yeah. And it's just, it's fun, and it lends a lot more realism, I think, to the story. Now, you had well, mentioned, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask Wayne, I think you had mentioned, uh, I'm trying to remember where I heard this because I don't want to give away anything. I think it, it might have been one of the the, the, the last Talk Right podcast um, where none of the writers showed up. <laughs> and um, you mentioned that, you know, you might like the Jesse series might end at some point because Jesse's 57 years old and, you know, you can't be an action hero and, and et cetera. And, and I think you were kind of still, that was still up in the air for you is whether or not that was going to happen or because um, he's, he's going to follow my lead, and uh, when I'm retired is when he'll really retire. So he's got a few years left. There. I'm 63, and right. uh, six months ago I started on a whole new adventure, uh, working out and getting back into shape, and I've lost yeah. I've lost a ton of fat and packed on a lot of muscle, and now I'm stronger and fitter than I've been in 40 or 50 years. So it is possible for a man in his 60s to be an action hero. I mean, oh yeah, physically, yeah, it, physically it's possible. Whether well, you the know, acuity is still there or not. <laughs> you can always retcon it too, because you know what? Um, Robert B. Parker had the same problem with Spencer. And I don't know if you read the Spencer novels, but he wrote the first one in like 1971, and in that book he said Spencer was 37. Well. So he writes for another 40 years or more. Well, Spencer can't be seven, almost 80 years old. Spencer and Hawk are not. So as time went on, he just sort of kind of breezed past that and just let their ages sort of become ambiguous. Yeah, that, yeah they're you older. Can but do don't that if you don't utilize any current events. Yeah. I like, have well, hurricanes that have happened in, yeah, you know, in one book, Hurricane, uh, what was it? 
Irma. Well, you used Irma, so yeah, yeah. Irma. Uh, Wilma was in uh, Fallen Palm, so that dates it for 2005. Irma was definitely 2018, 2019, 2018. So putting those current events in there, you date your character. And uh, that's, in hindsight, I, would, I shouldn't have done that because now I've got an aging character with an aging dog. <laughs> Well, I, I sort of had the same when I when I wrote Jarvis, like I said, I think I was 22 and he was 28. Now he's 34 and I'm 47. So <laughs> I, I kind of I I've, I've put myself in the right spot where he's younger than me. So he can go on for some time before I poop off anyway. <laughs> Hopefully. I, I made Jesse just two years younger than me, just so that I knew that what he experienced in the Marine Corps was what I experienced. So yep. he went through boot camp same same time of year that I did. It, everything was the same, I, so I could just draw on actual memories. And now, quick pause here. Does everybody has everybody got their adult beverages? Because I know usually it used to be that Wayne that you'd make sure that you had your pussers and uh, everybody's got their drink of the day going. I, or is it just me? I'm drinking the the Deep Sea series. From Ooh. Zigmeister Brewing. Wow. It's a marvelous IPA. Nice. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no so Diplomatico. I love that. I'm actually drink, drinking G2. Oh, so that's filthy. not as interesting. Yeah. Nah, what, what, oh, what, 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 are you, what are you finishing up there, Dave? Oh, that would be uh, bourbon and ginger ale. Yes. Nice. And Scott, oh, yeah. you brought oh, it up. Close so you to have something? Well, so I just have I, I, now. I was, go, I was going to make uh, a batch of Bosun's grog, um, but we made rather merry yesterday, so that's why, Dave, I'm not drinking my world famous margaritas. That's because what I was about to ask. Where's the margarita? I, I drank them all yesterday, <laughs> and at the end of the night, my cousin's like, "Hey, let's do shots," and I didn't listen to the dudes in my brain. They'll tell you not to do it, but no, I had to do it anyway. And so I was like, ooh, that's enough. So I'm drinking just uh, some single malt Glenlivet here. <laughs> I thought, so I'm just drinking. Take it light. I'm taking it light. Yeah, I'm taking it light. <laughs> well, I'm believe malt. me, there's more alcohol in my, in my margaritas than there is in the scotch. I can guarantee you. That uh, do we have any questions from YouTube before I plunge into something new? I was just about to say, it, it seems like YouTube chat isn't working. I said, hey, how's everybody doing? And oh. There hasn't been anything since then. Maybe we're just not interesting enough. Dave. Is anybody on there? Say hi. Well, let's see. I'm going to pull no, up. No questions there. Okay. Uh, well, in addition to those other three series, I, I was fascinated that you've got some horror books with, and one of them's got probably the best title ever, The Dead Travel Fast. I love that. <laughs> well, it's, it's a Dracula series, uh, literally. And that quote is actually from Bram Stoker's novel uh, when Dracula pulls up in his coach to collect Harker for the first time, disguised as a coachman. He tells the, the driver of the diligence, um, they turned in writing Schnell, which is the dead travel fast. It's from a, a poem, a German poem about a woman whose, hu whose husband returns theoretically from the dead and takes her away to the cemetery. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool gothic story. Anyway, it's, that's where it came from. That's cool. I, I, didn't, I, I, I saw that it was Dracula, but my first thought was, oh, zombies that don't shamble but run at you <laughs> which is the way it should be uh, Turner says hi and my wife says hi so we have two people watching hey, okay hey. all right how many people are actually watching all right we're, we're gonna edit all that about how there's no seven watching they, yeah they're they're this is up right. there all of this is gonna be <laughs> well we're, we're awfully popular today jeez uh well it probably threw folks normally we do this show on mondays uh, but not if it's a holiday. So this is a, a, a rare right. Tuesday show. Uh, let me ask about, you, you have a new Scott Jarvis book coming out probably next week. Mm -hmm. uh, w which one is this in terms, like how many are in that series? This will be number 12. Oh, 
and it's called He That Covets. And, and what's really interesting about this book is uh, in the 10th novel, Jarvis, Jarvis has owned my sailboat since number three. Uh, and old flipping out um, got herself blown up with a, uh, you know, a, a RPG, uh, burned and sank. And you know, ever since I did that, by the way, I've had I've had uh, to replace my drop my prop shaft, my rudder post is bent. Um, I've got some like, but like, and and I had an ex girlfriend tell me she's like, oh, that's because the boat she's she's mad at you for blowing her up, and now she's getting back at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, I shed a tear. I ain't gonna lie to you. She's on the hard right now, in fact, getting some work done. Um, but so because of that, Jarvis was able to, uh, in, a, in a very Doc Fordian, Jesse McDermott-y sort of thing, uh, had got his hands on some Spanish gold enough to buy himself a 90-foot schooner. Um, oh, so that, yeah. yeah. Even bigger than Jesse's. Yeah. How do you like me now? So... <laughs> 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 so... He, uh, this book is, uh, it, it gets to use that ship for what it's for. And, and it, it, he goes to the Lesser Antilles and uh, to Antigua and, uh, well, Yost Van Dyke, Antigua, Guadeloupe. Uh, so there's some, there's some action adventure. And, and he's now part of a, um, a special unit, sort of like what Jesse was in. Um, different, but similar type thing. So there's a lot of there's some there's some international intrigue. There's um, there's a Japanese agent. There's a Mossad agent. There's Russian. I mean, it's it gets pretty complicated and broad reaching. So it should be it should be interesting. And the Japanese agent will be the grandson of someone in the Bull Shark series. Right? <laughs> no, but uh, but Jarvis's CO happens to be the great grandson of Anvilar Turner and Jarvis himself. <laughs> His his great grandfather is a character in the in the Bull Shark series, so it, I like to tie them together. In fact, Catherine Cook is his great 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 grandmother. <laughs> so, you know, it all kind of ties it's together really really in some way. But you the the Dracula books you don't have any tie-ins between that and your yeah. own. Three. Well, oh no. Um, <laughs> Here's here's what I do sometimes. So, for example, the the the, the premise of the book, the, the lead character, aside from Dracula, of course, who is not a bad guy in the series, uh, is a, a woman who's an aspiring writer. And um, at least once in each of the books, he, and and well, I can't give too much away, but the, a couple of the characters will will mention that they're reading a crime series written by a guy in Florida. <laughs> so nice. that, it's sort of a a winky winky tie-in but nothing particularly direct although who knows maybe i'll you know one day do a crossover i don't know i'm mad with power i can't help <laughs> it <laughs> it's fun doing that that's how that's how the charity series came about it was randy wayne white's fault he uh he came out with the hannah smith series and i've always said anything randy does i do because he's successful and you do well, what successful do people do right and I sort of have the same thing. I do that with him and you. Um, I really enjoyed blue collar or no collar to blue collar, by the way. Uh, I know it's a bit dated now in, in terms of some of the things in it, but um, I think I first read it a year or two ago. Uh, and I thought that was just, it was a very interesting, um, a very interesting book for any writer to, and, and inspiring, obviously. I mean, here's a guy that was a truck driver one day and a best selling author the next. You know, like that. I mean, <laughs> there was a, uh, a few a few months or years or decades between the two, right? But still, I mean, you you went from that. I mean, you know, you and and you talked about your process and and where you were at the time. I think you were. I think when you wrote that book, you were just writing Jesse Ten. So yeah, I have really refined and streamlined the process, and now it's. It's gotten so smooth. Uh, this last release, we, we had, my team had everything uploaded. Nick finished recording. All the audio was uploaded. Everything was done uh, like three weeks ago. We could have pushed the release up early, but we just let it sit where it was. And uh, But it, it goes so smoothly now because I plan everything to the nth degree. And once I set the plan in motion, all my team team members just pick up the ball and 
carry it to the next person and they hand it off and much like we're doing with timeless with the football. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm still learning so much of the marketing and promotion side. Um, the, the bull shark series is far and away uh, my most popular one, you know, that it does the best of them all. Um, but it's also, it's also, it brings everything else up to some degree. Um, and I, I've, you know, w the Jarvis series is one that I find has been tougher because, well, that and the Dracula series, because it's, they're very, very popular genres. So there, there's a lot of noise you have to push through to get noticed that I'm still working on that and trying different things. And, you know, so. It's, it's a whole different world than, now than it was when I get I started. So blue collar, no collars. Yeah, it's dated, but uh, it's it's more of a motivational anyway. So the mm -hmm. motivational aspect of it's never going to die. But I will be writing another one someday called uh, No Collar to White Collar. <laughs> and, uh, um, as I develop the business and start publishing other authors, then it will become an actual business one day a real sure. a real thing <laughs> so i have a kind of a, a, kind of a question and it's really more for nick and dave because as narrators so for me for example because I, all of all of wayne's stuff i've read through audible you know I, I do a lot of audiobooks uh including my own and so in my mind when i think of jesse mcdermott nick i hear it's you you i mean you're jesse you know what i mean and uh, the same thing with Dave, with certain of my characters now, with Jarvis, when I think of him, I, it's Dave's voice that I hear in my head when I'm writing. Do you have that problem, Wayne? When you, when you write, do you hear Nick's voice in your yeah, head? Do it, it's characters? made my writing better. It's made the characters more realistic because now I'm speaking in their voice. And it, Nick started recording with uh, book five in 2015, I think. Or no, I had, I had ten, eight or nine books at the time and he finally caught up about nine months later but ever since he started doing the audiobooks it's changed how I write literally I mean because I hear not just what the voices in my head are saying I hear them in character in, yeah in stereo <laughs> yeah me too yeah I do the same thing I, it's it's really bizarre when, when I write now I, I hear you know Dave's or Philip's voice in my head uh in doing the characters and stuff which is really um it's really pretty interesting uh it's it's like you said it definitely changes things you're gonna have a lot of fun with rusty in this next book nick you, oh good <laughs> you know rusty is the center of all knowledge in the keys right he knows everything that's going on well there's something going on that he doesn't know and it's bugging the hell out of him <laughs> and he is just in the middle of a conversation he'll be like is it Panama? Are we going to Panama? Is that it? <laughs> Rusty we're, we're is one of my the, favorite people to voice. To wedding, nobody knows. And Florence isn't going to announce it the day before. And they're all going to jump into uh, Jesse's and Buck's flying boats and fly off to St. Bart's. But nobody knows where they're going yet. <laughs> uh, Rusty, absolutely one of my favorite voices to do. But uh, this last book, you had him talk a lot. And so there was a point where I'm like, okay, I got to take a break. <laughs> I just felt like I was shredding my cords. Yeah. Uh, and I just, I didn't want to like lighten it or anything. I was like, he's got to be full on. So I took an early, early lunch that day. Well, now sometimes when I, when I write uh, a character, I'll, I'll try to, you know, because you, you describe sometimes what they sound like, what they look like, of course, and, and how they sound. And I, I think of, like, how can I write this so Dave knows how to voice this guy, right? <laughs> yeah, you do a really good job of that, especially during the Bull Shark series. Man, you've got a guy from Jersey, you got a guy from from you know New York, and you know, and Rhode Island, of course, with uh, Pat Jarvis. I mean, it's and, and yeah, you Maine. Do good well, yeah. yeah, in Maine, yes. <laughs> oh, no. Maine, I love the Maine guy because I based him off. Have guys in your unit that are from absolutely everywhere. Yeah, and, and just in, uh, in when I was just before I got out, I had three roommates, and they were from uh, Boston, um, Wyoming, not Wyoming, Wisconsin, the other W, 
And uh, where was Smitty from? He was from Georgia. Oh, and that's I, I was from Florida, so we're section. just all over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's that's the way it is. You, I'm, in, in a submarine, you'd be surprised how many guys are from Kansas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never has never even been in the water. <laughs> Uh, well, Dan, uh, Dave, yeah. do, are you caught up with the books? Do you do you basically read whatever he's got coming out as it's being uh, formatted and sent up, or do you wait till it's live in ebook and then you get it? Yeah, I wait usually until Scott sends me the manuscript and then and just go right at it. Now, now that I've done several of uh, the Bull Shark novels and. Um, and and uh jarvis as well the private eye stuff i get a, i have at least an idea of who you know who's in it who the main cast is of course there will always be others that are thrown in the mix but um i got a good feel at least i feel like i have a good feel for the attitudes of of the characters and uh, and what i'm going into uh for the most part so yeah i just you know i, I love to read I've, I've been reading since i was a wee kid and you know and that's and i love to, to, you know, when I read a book, if it's a thriller, if it's a submarine thriller, you know, in my head, I'm, I'm going, you know, this is the battle scene and I'm reading it in my head. It's intense. So that's when I'm doing the audio. I, I, I want to, you know, I need to promote it the same way. It's got to come out the same way or it's just boring. So, <laughs> you know, so no, I imagine I, battle scenes require a oh, yeah. real attention to pacing. Yeah. Especially the, uh, in a submarine where a lot of it isn't just, you know, there's not a lot of, there might not be a lot of shooting. There might be several pages of just waiting, but you have to make that tension because, right. you know, you don't know what's coming down. You know, it's, you it's might hear awesome. the propellers. Yeah. Right the whoosh in the, is. yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> a lot of fun. Those are a lot of fun. Well, you know, Dave is actually my third narrator. Um, when I started doing audiobooks, the, the first, couple I did uh, I found a guy and and um, I think I was so excited about just getting them you know on ACX that I it wasn't until I did the second with the guy I was like eh, he just he was very monotone and uh, just wasn't that good um, I hope he doesn't see this <laughs> um, and then I got another guy his name was Lee Strayer who did he, he actually still is on if you get Jarvis one four five and six he, he's done those and i've thought about maybe even having dave redo them just because for for consistency um but lee did a good job you know he he the fourth one was the first one he did and he he, he got like dave he got the character he got the attitude he understood what i was going for um but he and i just had some issues in during book six and things were going on in his life and it just kind of didn't work out and then like Dave actually had done an audition for me for a zombie book that I wrote. So um, I, I, that was intended to be a series, but I just kind of lost interest in it. And so Dave did a sample for me and I liked what he did. Um, so when I was looking for the nearest, let me see if I can find this guy again. And, and, you know, he was available and did the next Jarvis for me and it turned out really good. So I'm like, well, he's doing bull shark too, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that works out right on. I can't wait for the other side of it, too, or the other bull shark. I don't know. What are you going to call those? So there's, well, it's going to be called Decker's Raiders. So it's ah. Al Decker and his guys. It's just going to, you know, it's going to be focused most, mostly around Al and, you know, Taggart and Leiter and Entwater and, and uh, um, what's his face? Uh, uh, Treadway. <laughs> Treadway. You guys, I like it. Treadway. Please stop calling me, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Love that. It's one of my favorite gags. Um, but so it's just it's just like where Tokyo Express, you know, there was so much going in between. And uh, I thought, you know, that really that's almost two books worth. I mean, you had you had the Bull Shark and then Jarvis was on the S-52 and then you had the Marines and you had Battle of Alligator Creek and the Botanicao. And it was like, oh, my God, you know, it's just it was so much. So I said, well, if I could split them apart and keep them together and we'll see how it goes, you know, Um see how it, if it's well received or if it's just like i can always put them back together but you just can't ignore all the stuff the marines are doing i mean there's too many stories yeah i mean every every other day there's a, a story of incredible heroism and bravery and sacrifice and you just can't let that stuff um so when, when people get mad at me for coloring outside the lines which they do because dave knows like there's some stuff in my in that series that's not 
true history. I 10% of, of it is completely made up for, for the purposes of the story. Um, but it, it lets me tell an, an interesting, different story. And it's not just the same old thing again. Because, I mean, how many World War II books are there? I mean, yeah. thousands, right? So, Do you cover the, uh, the, uh, the Raiders on Tulagi? Yes. Well, I haven't a little bit, not too much, but I, I will more in this in this series because um, the the guy, the main character, well, Decker is he's he's uh, he's in the first Raiders in Edson's Colonel Edson's uh, group. So I will definitely focus more on those guys uh, and go back and because yeah, there's some stories there too, obviously. Uh, let's I mean, see. Uh Double check YouTube for us real quick. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll edit that out too. Uh, <laughs> um, do you have any surface ship characters or is it all focused on the submarine? Well, um, again, the, the, the thing I'm having an issue with, there's two things that, that, you know, I have a hard time writing a short book uh, like the new Jarvis is, I think, 96 or 97,000 words, which for me is, you know, that's a short one. Um, so it, it, the World War II series, of course, it just grows. It's a world war, so it's hard not to. So there are, um, I, I do, so, okay, so book one was focused around Operation Drumbeat, where the Germans were attacking American shipping off the Atlantic coast. Uh, the second book centered mostly around the Battle of Midway. And then the third one was called the Cactus Navy, which was the Marine, uh, you, you know, the Marine assault on, on Guadalcanal. So you, you can't not focus, you know, break away and focus on, you know, air crews aboard the Enterprise or Japanese. There's, there's, there's cutaway scenes with Yamamoto and his chief of staff. Uh, there's a couple of Japanese characters who are, um, there's one who is sort of a, He's working to help the Americans win the war secretly, uh, not because he's a traitor, but because he feels the way Yamamoto feels that this war is just going to pull Japan into a, a terrible situation. And the faster the Americans win, the, the fewer lives will be lost, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's there's not too many uh, Americans, you know, I mean, other than I, I there's a few pilots that keep coming back, um, but. Again, that's another thing. I, I thought about writing a series just based around the Enterprise or maybe even all the carriers, but it's just, I mean, I, I could do this till I die. I'll never finish, you know? Yeah, Nick's a big history buff also, right, Nick? Yeah, I mean, I, the reason I asked, <clears throat> I'd love to have a scene where you've got a periscope witnessing the uh, South Dakota and the, uh, uh, was it the Washington blasting away at the Kirishima, one of the very few battleship on battleship uh, uh, combats in, in the Pacific, apart from the one in uh, Leyte Gulf. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it will be in there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm writing book five and I'm still in 1942. <laughs> and that's just, you know, I mean, the, um, the Cactus Navy ended um, a few days after the, the initial invasion. So it ended like on the 11th or, 12th of august and the next book tokyo express starts off almost immediately and ends just after the battle of the eastern solomon so i mean the whole book takes place within 10 days you know i i and again i could write an entire novel you know, inside of what happens on guadalcanal or tulagi or gabutu and or you know in a week you know it's just there's just so much it's yeah. um you'd think it'd be limiting because you you have to follow along with history but I, I like I said I color outside the line some I, I invent ships that weren't there or uh, in the next book there'll be a fifth Congo class battleship that the bull shark has to go after um, that sort of thing but you know it all operates within the framework but fictionalizing some stuff allows you to tell some different stories and, and go outside of again I mean Harry Holmwood his series was really good I mean there's so many good series there's so many good books from from living, you know, Dick O'Kane and Eugene Fluckey and uh, Charlie Lockwood. And I mean, there's so many, you know, real accounts of the war that you can draw on and, and that are just e even the even the real stories told dryly are unbelievable. Yeah, it's, you know, Dick O'Kane's books are amazing. You almost always have to 
span at least five or seven days. You, you can't just write, you know, just one battle scene, and that's no. the whole book. That's yeah, no. Randy, Randy Wayne White did it. He did one of his books. I forget which one. The whole Hunter's book Moon. takes place in twenty-four hours. I think Hunter's Moon. Hunter's Moon. Yeah, where he's he's there's an island, and he's out. He's paddling ashore to. But I think that's the one that, yeah, that you're talking about. No, that's the one where he's trapped underground underwater and a giant snake or something. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah. that's the other one. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the title, but I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, where he's, yeah, he's, he's running yeah, out of air. That's just tension all the way through. <laughs> it, when you write a book that only spans 24 hours, you have to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it can be done. I mean, look at the, what is it, the, the 24 series i mean the whole the whole season the, it's yeah. 24 so um you know so every episode's an hour which is you know yeah, it's 10 episodes to make an audio book though <laughs> right right well that's it and that's where like you know when you write if you it, i always said if, if i could write the, like the the first jarvis the first couple i think are seven hours and change and number 11 was like 14 or something <laughs> it's, and, and the bull sharks are all in that range 13 14 hours um so if i could find a way to write a, a shorter book i'd, I'd be well, i'd be richer wouldn't i because i could sell more books <laughs> <laughs> well dave let me ask you because everyone's seeing the uh, the guitars there over your shoulder yeah uh and listening to your basso profundo voice you, you said you were kind of new to the uh audiobook world but i'm guessing with that voice you're not new to a microphone no i yeah actually i have uh i work for a radio station in dayton ohio i work for mix 1077 i'm on the morning show and i've been on that show for good gravy 14 years i guess it's been now and i've been in radio for a little over 20 so yeah i've and uh you know and, and i got into narrating just you know, it's, I love to read. I'm like, let's, let's give this a go. Let's just something else to do. Uh, and I'm also the, I do a lot of public, uh, I'm the public address announcer for the, uh, for the Dayton Dragons, which is a little uh, minor league baseball team for the Cincinnati Reds, Cincinnati Reds affiliates in Dayton. And uh, I get to do all the, you know, in-house announcing, which is a lot of fun. Although last night they got killed 20 to one. So it wasn't a whole lot of fun then. Yeah. Oh, it was brutal. How do you keep a, an upbeat attitude as a, as an announcer when you're down? By <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Wayne drill hard. Um, it, there was a, they had a 12 run third inning. The opponent did the white caps. It was tw and on five hits. It was walk after walk after hit batter. It was just like, just beating your head against the microphone after a while. I was like, throw a strike, please throw a strike. But uh, yeah, so that's, uh, so I've been, you know, I've been, I've been doing broadcasting for, for quite a while now and just wanted to start dipping my toe in narrating. And thankfully I got hooked up with Scott. Yeah. The guy who writes. No, I don't sing. So I, <laughs> I just play those. I don't, I'm not a singer songwriter guy. I just like to play those things. Are you in a band? No, but I have I have played with a band a couple of times. Um, that that's just I think that was you know I'm 52. I think that might have been a midlife crisis about four years ago. <laughs> hey, let's I get an idea. Let's pick up the the guitar, and now it's an addiction. I I think I have seven of them. So um, oh fantastic! It's, it's just fun. Off, I, I just witnessed uh, uh, Scott attempting to make an adjustment on his phone, and now he's gone. So did he hang up? If you're watching, got, now it's Dave's time to shine. We've got nine guitars here in the studio, <laughs> and that's not all. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, I appreciate everything. Bases. Jordan's a you bass. got nine, so. nice, right? Nine I'm, you guitars know. and basses. Let's see. Yeah, we have we have lost Scott. Very nice. Hopefully, he'll find I'm his. Uh oh, what happened? Uh, I I saw him reaching up to adjust something, and then he went away. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Dave froze uh, up about that same time. Yeah, too. I don't. know. That was weird. Yeah, my internet said it was like you're unstable, but I don't know. We're we're back now. Uh, well, so Dave, uh, do you uh, record any other series? Any other types of uh, books? You know, I, I have done some um, instructional manuals type of things. I've done something for uh, the Enneagram, which 
I got finished reading that and I had no idea what I just read, but um, the author of it loved it and it's been very successful on Audible. <laughs> like, oh, great. I don't, I don't you know, I have no idea. I, I, it was very confusing to me, but you know, I, I tried to, you know, do an even keel type of thing. And, uh, and I've done a couple other instructional manual type of things that uh, done well. And, uh, but for the most part, on the radio, doing the dragon stuff, um, I, it's, you know, I got to find time. It's hard to find time to, to narrate these days. Thankfully, I, I, I have a, a studio these days in my, in my basement, which allows me to, you know, to sit at home and get it done. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it is what it is. I love doing it. It's so much fun. I can't, I know it's, you, you get to read, <laughs> you get to enjoy and, and, and read to folks and, you know, and, and listen and, and, and enjoy a lot of good stuff and learn a lot. I'll tell you what, when uh, I first started doing Scott's books, the, you know, Jarvis lives on a sailboat. I knew zero about sailing. I had no idea, you know, I, I didn't know what starboard port bow. I, I didn't know what left, right. I didn't know any of that kind of stuff. And well, you just hope that he does. That's right. <laughs> I, and he's back. <laughs> well, he's trying to get back. He's in. <laughs> oh, there he is. We need to get there. He is. A little low battery uh, issue. I had to. I had to emergency uh, plug in a plug in a, a yeah so so he, uh, so it's funny because Dave was just telling you about all the, the fact that he's a land lover and the guy that he gets to narrate for throws him all kinds of the uh, nautical stuff right right yeah <laughs> you know born and raised in Cincinnati Ohio it doesn't get much more more landlocked than that but uh, yeah it's been fun learning how to sail through Scott Cook. <laughs> Well, well Scott, it's interesting you do so much nautical stuff, and you were born and raised, I, I think, in one of the the towns that I associate with uh, the sort of the beginning of the the merchant marine front. You know, the between Boston and Gloucester, I, I always put Providence there in the top five for for our history. Well, in Newport, uh, of course. Newport, yes. But I was actually, uh, I was. When I was a kid, we moved to Stewart, which is uh, on the East Coast, sort of, it's about 45 minutes north of West Palm. Uh, well, okay, you've read, I don't know if you've read or heard of, of um, Rodney Riesel's Jensen Beach Mysteries. Jensen Beach is pretty much part of Stewart. Um, yeah, so, I don't know how to pronounce that right. It's Sturt. <laughs> Sturt. That's right. Sturt. It's, so, it's, just, it's just a little bit outside of Holopal. <laughs> <laughs> I know that area really, really well. I, I grew up in Melbourne, and uh, as soon as I got my license, I was all over Stewart, Holopal, Fort Pierce, all the way out to Bell Glade, just everywhere my car could go, and some places it couldn't go. <laughs> well, Stewart's interesting because it's, it's a bit like St. Pete, where I where I live now, where a lot of the town is is a bit of a peninsula because of the Indian River Lagoon, so there's a lot of inland water there. Um, so, I mean, growing up, we were always, you know, sailing, fishing, diving, boat, you know, I mean, we were, we were watermen since I, since you could hold a tiller, you know, so, um, it's only natural that that would bleed into my writing, uh, being a, a salty sailor that I am. Well, I have not sworn once though, Dave. Yet. <laughs> nice boy. I get yelled at by people a lot for that, by the way. I don't know if that happens to you, Wayne, or Nick, where I get guys that will, even send me an email or write a review on the bull shark series, especially, and, and you know, um, chastise me for the adult language. Um, and I yeah, try I've to got, I've got a couple. Um, I'm like, there, there's a reason they call it cursing like a sailor, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like these are marines and sailors. These are rough and tumble guys. <laughs> and I know, I'm sure that when a Japanese bayonet is tearing your guts out, you should say, gosh darn it, you, you Asian fellow. But that's not what they say. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nick, Nick, you haven't asked your kryptonite question. Oh, boy. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, Dave, since he's come from radio and has started to narrate, that a lot of the accents might be kryptonite. But, but I'll go ahead and ask. We, we always ask our... Um, our narrators, is there one that you just can't do and pray to God that he won't hit you with? Let's all of them. 
<laughs> no, I, <laughs> that's why I didn't ask. Yeah, <laughs> that, it, right. Yeah, I'm. You know, I, like I said, I'm just getting. Uh, I'm getting my feet wet thanks to Scott and and uh, doing a lot of his his books. But you know, I, I'm I'm learning. I'll try. Thank heavens for YouTube. Because you, you can you can kind of get a quick learn of a dialect or an accent, and I'll try to I'll try to listen to it over and over again and 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 uh, and keep that. call me out. He's like, dude, that was terrible. Try again, <laughs> you know, of that kind of nature. So you know, it, it, you try it once, doesn't work. He says, yeah, you might want to try this one again. So. <laughs> but there's a lot of fun. I, I love doing all the characters on on Bull Shark, especially. Like he said, there's Maine, there's New York, there's Jersey, there's you know, there's uh, Mississippi there. It's a lot of fun. It's just a, you know, big group of family guys and they all, you know, jaw on each other and getting each other. But, you know, there's still a family and it's a lot of fun to read, man. Well, that, that kind of brings up a thing that, um, and I think maybe Wayne, because uh, I mean, Nick obviously writes as well, but he does his own narrating, so he can't really critique himself. Um, but how much... Um, editing or how much suggestion do you do with Nick's narrating? Because I, I always have a weird thing about that where I don't want to critique too much or give too much micromanagement. And you know what I mean? It, I, it, I really don't it, have to do a whole lot. I, I, I give Nick a, a, a character outline, a list of all the different characters and where they're from, who they are, what they do, you know, height, weight, hair color, all, all physical descriptions. And then he just kind of comes up with the character accent or the character's voice uh, based on that. A lot of times, you know, they have a strong Southern accent or a New York accent or Australian or whatever. And uh, so that's, that makes it a lot easier. But uh, most, a lot of them are just plain old Florida people like me and you. Mm -hmm. We don't have accents. We have a, <laughs> an accent of a whole conglomeration of different people because Florida is just all outsiders <laughs> yeah. well I, I do have one but it, I, it doesn't come out as often as it used to but like because i've had a thing with with trying to teach dave the difference between well like new england accents there's several of them and where i'm from in yeah. rhode island you know it's it's more new york so up up there you, people kind of talk like i'm talking right now they go you know they they, they park their car they go down to the, the they go out in the yard you know like that but it's it's easy to sort of get to the Boston, which is had a you know you got much of a had a accent, dude. Come on, get in your cab. We'll go down to you know. So <laughs> I know yeah. I drive them nuts with that. I'm sure. No, no, you get uh, only way to learn, my man. Only way to learn. Yeah, the New England. I, I Boston is one of my kryptonites, uh, and because half the time I sound like Mayor Quimby, which is Boston <laughs> Brahmin, not really Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Chow yeah, Chow 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 again, Frenchy. <laughs> Chow <Chow -dale. laughs> That's right. <laughs> I hope you guys know these references, man. So sometimes people don't. I do a lot of that, and sometimes I think, well, I wonder if some people are going to get some of these obscure references I make, you know. But I, I slid in a reference for Archer, this animated oh, series on FX. Brilliant. And I had two readers send me emails oh my god i love that you stuck it <laughs> it worked you didn't have to know the context but if you did it was twice as funny yeah those, those little easter eggs readers love finding those and yeah. it, it's it's just something that you have in common with a small handful of your readers and they know who they are and they know who you are well i think that you know especially in the jarvis series there's a lot of pop culture references you know um, for example, he'll say, you know, Lisa will say, be careful, Jim. And he'll say, sound medical advice, Bones, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, because that's how people tell I me mean, that's how, you know, when you're talking to your friends, you, you make you make movie, you do movie lines and make references. You do a line from Caddyshack or, you know, Young Frankenstein, whatever. That's how people are. So I think I've always felt no matter what I'm writing. Um, and this is actually an interesting question for, for Nick and and. Wayne too, is I feel that no matter what the story, that the, the characters really are the most important thing. If you can make them seem real to people, um, you'll, you'll have a much better story. Uh, the, the personalities and the dialogue and stuff has got to be true to life. It, it, your readers have to think that they're looking or listening to real people. 
Yep, absolutely. Well, with that, we are at the end of the hour. Well, I just uh, finished my... Yeah. Time to <laughs> refill. <laughs> yep. yep. Scott, Ain't none but Dave, thanks for being on here with us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And well, thanks for having us. Thank our, our supporters, uh, tropicalauthors.com, Latitudes and Attitudes Magazine, Down Island Publishing, Down Island Press, or our publicity. Uh, who am I missing? Pirate Radio. Pirate Radio. Yes. Oh, I love them. Love so, them. anyway, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Good night, you guys. Thanks for having us, guys. It's great talking. Yeah, to you. thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Oh. And